Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for another Civilization VI Rise and Fall Governor Spotlight, where today we are looking at Liang, the Surveyor. Uh, so Liang's starting ability is that all builders trained in the city get plus one build charge, and I think that that's going to be a very strong uh, starting ability, because that's going to just make it so that you can improve your tiles faster, get those bonuses faster, and you're going to have to construct less builders as a result. So I think for that reason, Liang's going to be very good to be the... Uh, the, the first governor that you select, you know, along with Amani, who's uh, who's also pretty strong in the early game. I think I think Liang's going to be right up there with her, if not even better. Uh, as far as her tier 1 abilities go, she has Infrastructure and Aquaculture. Infrastructure provides plus 30% production towards city center and government plaza buildings. So that's going to be stuff such as your granary, your water mill, city walls, and government plaza. If you uh, if you have if you don't know what a government plaza is, check out the latest Civ 6 news video where I, I talked about that a bit. Uh, I think that's going to be a pretty good a uh, pretty good ability. It's going to allow you to make you know obviously your granary and your water mill faster, which which provide some nice bonuses. I don't think it's going to be that strong, but I think it's going to be at least it's going to be helpful. Uh, aquaculture uh, actually grants a unique tile improvement, which is the fishery, which can be built uh, on coastal plots, and it's effectively a farm for coastal plots. It provides one food, and then an additional one more food if it's adjacent to a sea resource. Uh, so I think for some civilizations, especially the naval-focused one, uh, aquaculture is going to be a very strong ability, because it's going to allow you to just grow your population really fast, provided that you have the housing space for it. Uh, so I think that's going to be very strong, situationally. Uh, her tier 2 abilities are Zoning Commissioner and Amusement. Zoning Commissioner provides plus 30% production towards constructing districts in the city. Uh, I'm not sure how good that is as a tier 2 ability, uh, just because I'm not really sure if you're going to need that production by the time you get your tier 2 abilities. Uh, so that's yet to be seen. Uh, it, it is possible that you might you might still have a lot of places where you need to construct districts, so that that could be good. Or if you're just making a new city, it'll help it'll help you uh, start the city up faster, get those districts up real nice and early. So I I think that's still a pretty okay ability. Uh, amusement provides plus thirty production towards entertainment complex and water park buildings in the city. Uh, once again, I think that's just okay because I don't find myself constructing entertainment complexes very often. But uh, provided that you need them, that actually is going to speed that up a lot. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it mentions water park buildings, which I am not aware of what a water park building is, or what a water park is in general. Uh, so maybe this could be a new district in Rise and Fall. Perhaps it provides uh, tourism, or loyalty, or more amenities, or anything of the sort. Uh, if you have any ideas about that, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Uh, Liang's Tier 3 ability is Parks and Recreation, which is yet another unique tile improvement uh, that provides two appeal to the land tile that it's placed upon, and uh, one culture and plus one amenity if it is adjacent to water. Uh, I think that's that's a pretty okay Tier 3. Uh, once again, <laughs> like that that seems to be the theme with Liang, is that everything is pretty, it's pretty okay, pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good, especially if you're going for, like, culture victory, because that culture's nice. Uh, if you're playing as Australia, that's going to be totally broken, because Australia gets uh, bonuses to their districts based on the, the appeal of the tiles. So, that's going to be pretty ridiculous if you can just increase your tile appeal even that much more. Um... As far as some recommended use cases for Liango, uh, obviously in the early game, if you want to just bolster your, your tile improvement game, you want to get those tile improvements up really fast, get the bonuses, uh, getting that plus one build charge is going to be very nice, so so I can definitely recommend Liang as being one of the first governors you uh, you happen to get in Rise and Fall. Uh, another thing I think you can do with Liang is if you want to you wanna play wide, you want to just get cities up fast and get them actually built up pretty decently, I think Liang is going to be very good for that because you can get your districts up fast, you can get your, uh, your, uh, your, your city center buildings up fast, and I think that's going to be very helpful. And even if you're thinking about playing a culture game, I think that Liang could be pretty helpful because of parks and recreation. And also it can just get you a lot of a lot of population and a lot of, a lot of districts that can help provide culture or tourism or anything of the sort. Uh, so thank you for watching. I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization Six news, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I am doing a one governor video every day this week until I run out. Uh, there are only two left. If you haven't seen the other ones, I'll link the playlist in the uh, video description below. But until then, thank you for watching, and goodbye.